E of the Asian region. Okay, go smooth forward, okay? Because it's a backward forward, okay? Okay. It's okay if I... Yeah, it's okay. okay. <clears throat> Hello, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Tiago, and um, I work uh, uh, with AppCoins. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, thank you, Kyber, for inviting us to share um, our project with the Korean community and also explain how we're going to work together. Um, thank you for Ashed. I'm very impressed with uh, the event they organized, so I think they really uh, did a, a great job. And I also want to say hello to the people watching on YouTube because I know a lot of uh, AppCoins investors are watching, so hello to you all. Okay, so uh, before I speak about AppCoins, um, I have to speak about Aptoid. Um, one thing I want to uh, make it clear, when people hear about AppCoins for the first time, they think we are creating an App Store. We are not creating an App Store. We already have an App Store. The name is uh, Aptoid. And I just gonna spend a couple of slides about Aptoid for you to understand who is the company behind the idea of uh, AppCoins, okay? So, um, Aptoid is the second largest Android app store in the world. So, number one is Google Play, of course. Everybody knows Google Play. We are the second uh, largest one. Um, in terms of the numbers we have, uh, the green number on the left, this is the number of uh, downloads happening inside our store since we launched the company in 2011. Okay, so around 5 billion downloads. Um, the blue number, the 30 million, that is our user base from December 2017. So we had 30 million active users in December. An active user for Aptoid is someone that download at least one app in that month. And then uh, the, the red number is the number of apps and games that we currently have in our store which is one million. Um, we uh, already uh, have a lot of developers working with us, more than 12,000, and here is just some logos of some of these developers, but it's more than 12,000 developers that already upload their apps and games into our platform. Um, about Two to three years ago, we launched our B2B business. So what is the B2B business? Is we work with some of the top Android manufacturers in the world to provide content to their app store. So the examples I have there is a Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo. And what happened here in uh, August, um, we had uh, some partners, but not like uh, tier one partners. And then in September, uh, Xiaomi launched with us. And then October, uh, Vivo and Oppo also starting uh, working with us. And that's why we see a very big jump in our B2B numbers. And I wish uh, one time uh, I'll have a chance also to work with uh, Samsung and LG. We'll, we'll see. OK, so I finished talking about Aptoid, which is the company uh, behind the concept of AppCoins. So what is AppCoins? We're trying to create uh, the first blockchain currency for app stores. Aptoid, my company, is behind this idea, but the goal is to make this uh, protocol open source for anybody uh, that has an app store to be able to use it. Why we want to do this? Because uh, this is the current market for uh, app distribution in the world. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, this is the uh, Apple environment, which is a closed environment, uh, very difficult to penetrate here. And then this is the Google Play uh, uh, environment today, the Android environment. So uh, outside from China, where Google is not present, outside from China, 82% of uh, downloads in Android come from this company, Google Play. So it's like a monopoly. And then you can see Aptoid here, uh, which is one of the players, but there's more players here. So what we're trying to do is break this monopoly. That's our uh, vision. 
And how we plan to do this? By launching this protocol that I'm uh, presenting to you today. And by making it open source, we are hoping that the other guys here, these players, if we all together use the same protocol, maybe we can disrupt the uh, monopoly. That is our vision. So, um, so um, what are we trying to do with the protocol? Is uh, three things. One, we want uh, the developer to have a more efficient way to acquire users through advertising by using smart contracts in the blockchain. Um, we want users to do in-app purchase also uh, in a more efficient way. And then we want to improve the app approval. So right now, I'm going to explain one, two, and three for you to understand what is our vision in the white paper. Okay, so the first point about user acquisition. Um, if you are not familiar with the traditional way uh, a developer acquires users, on the top you can see the traditional method today. So if you are like, a, let's say, Kalkal Talk, and you want to acquire users for your app, you have to hire an ad agency that will work with an exchanger, you have to pay some money to a CPI uh, network, you have to get ad servers, DSP servers, SSP servers, you must uh, pay some money to have an attribution link, and then the, the app store uh, or the publisher. So all these guys will take some money uh, in the process, and in the end, when Kaukau gets the user, many times Kaukau has no idea where the user came from. What we are proposing with our uh, uh, smart contract is Kaukau establish a one-to-one -one smart contract uh, with the user. Kaukau will reward the user if the user installs the Kaukau app and uh, stays in the app for at least two minutes. And the reward of the app coins, 85%, will go to the user, and then 15% will go for uh, the store, which can be Aptoid or any other store that implements the protocol, and 5% to the smartphone manufacturers. We think we should reward the, the smartphone uh, manufacturer like uh, Samsung. So that's about advertisement. For the in-app purchase, a similar concept, okay? so. If the user uh, today wants to buy something inside Google Play or Apple, uh, the developer gets 70%, uh, and Google Play and Apple will take 30%. If you speak with any developer, they, they, they don't like this 30% cut, but they don't have an alternative today. So as I mentioned before about our vision, we really hope that if AppCoins becomes a successful protocol, we are able to change this industry standard because we think this is very unfair for the developer. So what we're proposing with AppCoins, um, the user will use AppCoins to do uh, in-app purchase uh, inside the game. We want to give the developer 85% and then 15% will be split between the store and the smartphone manufacturer. So that's our proposal for the AppCoins uh, in-app purchase. Um, one of the things that uh, we really try to accomplish here with AppCoins is that uh, there are statistics that say that today there's uh, 5 billion uh, smartphones uh, in, the, in the world, and about 2 billion of these smartphone holders, they don't do in-app purchase today because they don't have a credit card or bank account. We would like to change that with uh, uh, AppCoins. How we plan to do it? We plan to do it the same way we do it Aptoid today. So if you are a user of Aptoid, I don't ask your name, I don't ask your email address. The only thing I track is the CPU ID of the device, and we want to do the same thing with AppCoins. So the vision is, you are inside the store, you see that these apps are rewarding with AppCoins, you install the game and play two minutes, you earn some AppCoins, and then you can actually do uh, in-app purchase. We want to do this as easy as possible without asking for the name or uh, the email address from the, the user. That is the, the vision. The final thing we're trying to improve with the blockchain and the AppCoins protocol is about the security. So what you see here on the left, these are the steps that today uh, Aptoid takes to make sure no virus 
or malware gets into our platform. So what we do is uh, every time a, a game or app is uploaded into our platform, it goes to a temporary pool to be checked. Then we use uh, six antivirus tools to check for virus. Then we compare the, the signature of the app with the version from uh, Google Play to make sure nobody changed the signature. And then finally, we have our own malware database. And only after all these steps, we allow the app inside the, uh, our platform. But the problem today, because we are not in the blockchain, other app stores don't know what's happening here. So our idea for the blockchain is all this information, once the AppCoins protocol is ready, is to make it available in the blockchain. That means if a developer tries to put a bad app inside Aptoid with some virus, we will flag it with virus, it will be in the blockchain. And if that developer then tries to go, for example, to Amazon App Store, Amazon can actually check the public ledger and see the reputation of this developer and decide they don't want to accept the app. Okay, um, so um, uh, about the team working with AppCoins, um, Aptoid uh, has uh, 90 employees, 9-0 today. Uh, about 20 of uh, our team members are fully de dedicated already to the AppCoins project. Um, it's, as I mentioned, it's open source, so if you actually go to the, uh, our GitHub, you can already see an MVP version of the AppCoins protocol is in GitHub. And the idea is uh, we want, by the end of first quarter, to have a better release to 10,000 uh, Aptoid users. Once we are happy uh, with the way the protocol is working, uh, the, the ownership of the protocol will transfer to the App Store Foundation. And the App Store Foundation will be a separate entity from uh, Aptoid. And any other App Store that wants to use AppCoins, they don't talk with Aptoid. They go and speak with the App Store Foundation. Um, finally, uh, we have a very good team of uh, advisors. And of course, uh, TN uh, from Kyber was a, 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 a super advisor uh, during ICO. He's still a, a good advisor because he invited me to be here. Uh, so I think you're very lucky if you get him as an um, advisor. Okay, uh, so now uh, about the Kyber um, integration. Um, the first thing I want to say, uh, I wrote here a draft to make sure that uh, <laughs> this is the concept. We still need to do the actual integration work, but that's how we envision uh, uh, working with Kyber. So uh, today, uh, when you go inside Aptoid and you want to buy something, we already have traditional fiat currency payments like PayPal and credit card, which are global payments. And then we have like uh, some payment methods, like these ones are from Brazil, and this is MOL from Southeast Asia. This is the current uh, situation. And now the plan is, of course, as I explained, to launch uh, app coins, so you'll be able to do in-app purchase using app coins, but we also want to uh, support any payment with a ERC20 token, so Kyber will be added uh, once we have the app coins protocol uh, ready. And uh, how we think this will work in terms of uh, UI, so uh, the Aptoid user uh, actually uh, holds all these uh, um, ERC20 tokens, when he goes inside the game and he wants to make a payment, he can choose between uh, PayPal, a credit card, for example, MOL, uh, app coins, of course, or choose to pay with any of these ERC20 tokens. And the idea is that uh, 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 Kyber will uh, power this uh, behind the scenes, that <coughs> I'm actually paying with uh, Omizi or a, a Kyber token, but of course, the developer uh, will receive uh, app coins. So this is the concept, and this is how we plan uh, to work with uh, Kyber. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. And if you have questions, I really appreciate it. Please give him a big hand. We have around the five minutes. And please deliver the microphone. Ah, yeah. 
설명 잘 들었습니다. Thank you very much for the kind explanation. 증명 인증을 할 때는 CPU ID를 통해서 you are using the CPU ID for the personal identification and authentication. If the user changes his device, the CPU ID will be changed. And how about the existing information? The existing information can be retrieved, and what kind of policy you are using so that you can identify he still is the same user. Okay, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, asking that question. Um, so I tell you how it works today with Aptoid and how we plan to do with the uh, AppCoins protocol. Uh, so today with Aptoid, if you change phone and you did not create an account uh, with us, you're right, I, I cannot know you are the same user. So users of Aptoid, they know if they want to uh, actually back up their apps to make sure when they move the, to the new phone, they have to create an account with us. So they either create an email address and password or a login with a Facebook or Google login. Um, for the app coins, because there's money involved and there's currency involved, we have to be much more careful. So what we are thinking is still not decided, is that we're going to...